revolution might have never happened, not everyone in the 13 American colonies wanted independence, and almost no one imagined that the colonists, who had no standing army and no navy, could defeat the strongest military power since the Roman Empire. And we look back across the centuries, great events, sometimes he, neat and orderly, planned out in advance, but many times the small events lead up to the great ones. Were disorderly and accidental, the Boston Massacre was one of those. Neither side meant for there to be bloodshed that day. March 5th, 1770, in Boston, Massachusetts, a wet snow had fallen that day. Perfect for making snowballs. Look, a crowd is gathering around the customs house. That is where the money from the hated taxes is stored. A single century stands guard. Lobsterback! Go home, Lobsterback! They called the British soldiers Lobsterbacks because of their red coats. In those days, lobsters weren't considered a delicacy. Lobsters were everywhere along the shore, and in a minute's notice, you could pick up more than you could carry. Only the very poor people ate them, and others used them for fertilizer. The British are thieves, tyrants, invaders. Tom Finnegan, Lobsterbacks! Actually, the common British soldier wanted to be friendly with the American colonists. The British soldiers did not want to be here so far away from their homes, but the colonists saw them as occupying army which they were. It was an impossible situation. The current of events was moving too quickly for anyone to control. Go away, thugs. Thugs? You call us thugs? If we had invaded London, he might rightly call us thugs. Uh-oh, now they're throwing snowballs at the century. Down with the British town. Down with the town shindacks. See that man who just shouted down with the town shindacks? That's Christmas addicts, a black sailor. Most of the facts of, about his life were lost in time, but he's about to pay a big price for his views. The Townshend Acts wrote all these. The Townshend Acts were import duties in other words, taxes on goods imported from England. England taxed goods such as paper, glass, paint, and tea. The colonists didn't object to paying off taxes. Every British person paid taxes. It's just that the colonists wanted to be consulted about it. The men who wanted independence patriots such as Sam Adams, Paul Revere, and Ben Franklin needed a cause around which to rally the people to their side. Lovely talk in beautiful language about the rights of people wouldn't it do it. They needed something concrete, something everyone could understand. With the Township Acts, the British handed the patriots a cause. To see how coincidentally there was a political battle going on back in England between two competing parties and one party used the issue of colonial taxes to taunt the other side. Neither really cared about it, but they should have. To see how this happened, let's shift the scene back to the English Parliament in London. You cowards, you afraid to the Americans that we dare you not tax Americans, you have won. That was Lord Greenville. He used to be head of the parliament, sort of like our president. But he got voted out of office and now he wants to gain it back. Do I fear Americans? No. Am I a coward? Dare I not tax America? I dare. I am not a coward. I dare to tax America. And that was Lord Townshend. He's our secretary of treasury. Do you, Townshend? I wish to God I could see it. By God, you will see it. It's interesting to wonder what might have happened if the British had behaved more diplomatically, more intelligently toward her colonies in America, but colonies, especially those so far away, were expensive to maintain. Lord Greenville, looking for a cause to help him get re-elected, found a popular one in the idea that the colonies should help pay for the keep. It was not a smart move, but Lord Townsend jumped on it. That led straight to trouble and back to Boston. As you can see, the angry crowd has grown. 
Town Feather Lord Townshend. That shows what you know. Lord Townshend's been dead these three years. Good. May he rot. May all England rot. Stop throwing snowballs and I'll shoot in self-defense. Defense? We're the ones who need defense against you. Here comes John Gray. Break it up. Everyone go home. John Gray owns that rope making shop over there. Many merchants were against independence because they thought it would be bad for business. Go home, I say. Leave the sentry alone or there will be trouble. He's not from there, John Gray. He's been hiding those soldiers. Shame on you, John Gray. You're a traitor, Gray. He's not the traitor. You're the traitors. You betrayed England and your king. Tar and feather, King George. Shut your mouth. Down with England. Break it up. Break it up, I say. They're throwing snowballs again. And rocks. Here comes an officer. It's Thomas Preston, Captain of the Guard. Disperse, he's trying to make us disperse at once. Or I'll call off the guard. Look, he's drawing his sword. He means to attack us. A rock hits the captain. Now it's going to turn serious. Stop this! Go back and supervise your British soldiers. They're probably loafing. Send them the guard. Here they come. One, two, three, five, eight. Eight soldiers. They are armed for battle. Captain Preston takes his place at the head of the line. Hey, Captain, wait. I'm sure we can settle this without violence. That's Richard Palms, a respectful local merchant who tries as a peacemaker. But it's too late for peace. Sir, I trust you mean no harm to these people. By no means, sir. But we'll fire and self defense. Make no mistake about that. Put down your weapons and fight our men. Cowards! Stand back, you people. Do not crowd us. You stand warned. Stop those things. Stop this now. But someone reaches out and grabs one of the soldier's muskets. No! The gun goes off. And all the soldiers fire. It's happened, the first bloodshed in the war, and it hasn't even started. Five people are dead, including Crispus, Attucks, and several others are wounded. The wounded and the dead are carried from the street. Captain Preston seems panic-stricken. He didn't mean for this to happen, and he will have to answer for it. He's marching his men away, screaming at them as guns mark fades in the cold winter breeze. But the story didn't end there. Captain Preston and his men were placed on trial for murder. One of the most famous patriots, John Adams, volunteered to defend them. Are you out of your mind, Adams? Those men killed Americans in cold blood. How could you defend them? I do it not because I love England, but because I love liberty. There can be no liberty if the right to a fair trial is denied by anyone. The soldiers were found guilty of manslaughter by a jury and given only token punishment that was a fair verdict because to be guilty of murder you must have intended to kill a person. That wasn't the soldier's intention and besides they were provoked by an angry crowd. Nobody in that crowd deserved to get shot but without them, their words and actions, the incident would never have happened. I hope you're happy Adam. The choice of the soldier and or not is all that matters in the court of justice. John Dredd, how can we accuse the English of taking on our rights and then turn around and do the same to their citizens? The radical patriot Samuel Adams agreed with his cousin John completely on everything including the right to resist injustice and tyranny, the right of freedom. But Sam believed that to attain freedom, you sometimes needed to stretch the truth. He stretched it a lot. Let's move outside and you'll see what I mean. Read all about it. Murder Red Coats. Murder the citizens of Boston. Get the latest by Sam Adams, eyewitness to massacre. Instant blood crying to God from the streets of Boston by Sam Adams. Get one while they last. Sam also encouraged his friend Paul Revere to engrave a picture of the shooting on a copper plate so that it could be printed on paper and widely distributed. It showed a line of British soldiers intentionally firing into the crowd of respectable unarmed citizens. This picture became the truth to most colonists that what propaganda is all about. Sam Adams was a true radical but then, the idea he and the other patriots believed in was also radical in those days. The idea was the general public 
true, and good, true for our readers. Oh, by the way, on March 5th, 1770, the very day of the Boston Massacre, the English Parliament repealed Townshend Acts. The good news about the taxes would reach American shores several weeks too late.